I hear you. If you worry about your stuff, he says, hey, shut up. This is more fun than the show. <laughs> hey, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Choir Practice. I'm Bernie Hallams with... I'm Kyle Reyes. I am back here visiting from Florida, and uh, another great state that we have a guest from today would be Texas. Tell them all Texas who you are. Texas representing. Uh, well, my name is Amy Robbins, and... I am the CEO and co-founder of Alexo Athletica. And recently, give a shout out to Parlor earlier, I just became their national spokesperson. That's so, outstanding. Yeah. yeah, excited. I'll tell you about that a little bit later. I mean, you're way better looking than the dudes behind that company. Let's <laughs> we'll call it what it is. <laughs> um, we're going to dive into her backstory. We want to open up with a couple of shout outs. Um, so first of all, I'm super excited about this brand, Open Carry Outdoors. So this super sexy leather bag. Um, I just love it. I'm a big fan of bags and like purses, like straight up dude purses. Mm -hmm. But I could put my pew pew in here, so and it just smell smell that. That's nice. Can I touch it? Yeah, it's oh, amazing, thank you. Isn't yeah, it? it's thank nice. you. That is nice. And oh, yeah, nice. It's just, it's um, very nice. We actually these guys also sent us a cooler. We'll be showing that off soon. Awesome. You can carry in the cooler, which That's is nice. pretty cool. And I'm also super excited today. Uh, number one, I got this brand new shirt from Warrior Twelve. I don't know if y'all could see that. Sure. And that's going to be a great segue into her clothing line in a second. No but speaking of clothing, clothing, I also want to give a shout out to freaking Durango. So I have worn Durango boots forever. I've got my Texas boots. Nice. Um, they saw that they were kind of beat to hell after eight years of wearing them everywhere, wearing them on the border, wearing them, you know, on real man TV. And so they sent some brand new boots. Super excited. I mean, that's awesome. Leather. Beautiful. Why are you did not you see as excited the, you, about these as I am? I'm not, I'm you not, look like mm. listen, bro. I'm not a boot wearer. You, show the bottom though. That's cool. You didn't even know that. I mean, look at eight that. Eight years. The bottom that's is. A, it's, that's a big testimony hold on. for a pair of boots. Yeah, they're spectacular. So they're one side patriotic and the other side is pride. That's pretty cool. Mm. America. That's, def, that's badass. All right. There's no Speaking doubt. Speaking of patriotic pride, <laughs> I have followed you on social media forever. A little bit of a fanboy. I've been um, saying we've been like Insta friends. We've we have been, been Insta friends for a while because I felt the same about you. I've followed you, love your content, and I'm like, wait, but we don't actually, we haven't actually met. Yeah, never now. met. And yeah. then, and it turns out we know so many of the same people. It's yep. a pretty small space. Um, she was like, how how did you meet John from Parlor? And I was like, well, I'm friends with Carl Higby. And she was like, oh, Carl. <laughs> Say no more. <laughs> Carl. I mean, Carl. so shout out to, to our boy Higby, uh, who we used to back in the day we used to produce a show at the whiskey wall it was called whiskey patriots and we would yeah. sit around and yeah. we would drink whiskey and we would make fun of liberals yeah. it was really well then intense. i mean that was good practice i mean for what he does now so exactly posts are hope yeah well and then <laughs> carl almost got us evicted from that studio because we were on the second floor in the oldest operating wool mill in the u.s so he said one day it was like hey you got a cargo elevator i was like yeah he goes what is the weight capacity I said, I don't know why. He goes, you think I get my Harley in there? Oh. So I said to the landlord, oh. hey, what's the weight on that? And he was like, oh, it's it's pretty strong. Why? <laughs> I said, can you put like, I don't just kill, like a, a motorcycle? He was like, oh, yeah, man, 100%. So I get a phone call the next day from my landlord, and he is screaming at me. Are you kidding me right now? Who is riding a Harley around in my building no. on the second floor? I'm going to kick you out. I said, bro, that's a Navy SEAL. And so you're going to have to yell at him. I can't. He was like, what do you mean it's a Navy SEAL? I said, it's Carl Habe. He goes, oh, tell, tell Habe I said, what's up? <laughs> and so we did not get evicted, but uh, well, that's that's Carl for wow, you. Wow, the shenanigans. I'm sure you have plenty of stories about about Carl. Carl also taught me that one pound of Tannerite is a good idea, but a five-gallon bucket of Tannerite is probably a felony. Yeah, not so, so much. So yeah. anyway, <laughs> let's talk about your company and your backstory. And well, all that hello. Stuff. Well, first off, thank you for having me here. Just walking into this space, you instantly can tell this is a very special place and it's a very special community. Didn't know we were going to have a live audience here today. And just, just seeing some of the people that I said, are you on the show? They're like, no, I'm just here to watch. Like, that's really cool what you guys have built. So thank you. It's an honor oh, to nice. be here today. Yes. Um, so what did you ask me? I don't even know. Tell me about my company. Let's okay. talk about your backstory. Yeah. Like, how'd you get into this space? Okay, well, if you would have asked me, I don't know, 15 years ago, or no, if you would have told me, you're going to be in, like, the gun industry, I would have laughed in your face. I'm like, huh? I mean, I grew up with guns. My dad was a big outdoorsman, big hunter. Always had shotguns, rifles, and everything, like, under the bed. Not in a safe. I mean, you know, just the good old, the good old days when 
we had all girls just like you. So we knew like, we just don't touch the guns, but I didn't know anything about them. I mean, we would go out shooting on our land every now and then. So yeah. So if you would have told me that you're going to be hosting a show for the NRA and you're going to get into the gun space and then you're going to like try to help save millions of women's lives by creating concealed carry, I would have laughed. And I'm like, absolutely not. But God has other plans. And I have learned a long time ago, just, just let it, just roll with it. Like you do not need to take your, you take your ideas and then you just kind of put those aside the and then you let God show you what he wants you to do yep. and just run with it. So um, in 2013 is where I, I got my first kind of introduction into the, I would call it the firearm world, like the 2A space. Always a big supporter of the Second Amendment, um, but you have to think back to that time. Social media, social media influencers, that wasn't really a thing. I didn't think I had an Instagram account at that at that point. So when I got contacted from a production company that said, "Hey, are you? Do you happen to be like a gun girl?" I'm like, "What does that mean? Like, I own them. Like, I don't know anything about them." They said, "Well, we want you to come in audition for this show. We're doing like a gun show." And I'm like, "Huh? About about like what? What am I? Am I going to be like the only pro gun person on this show? Like, I probably don't want to, any part of that. I don't know." Um, Come to find out, it was with this really cool up and coming gun influencer named Colian Noir, who was getting his own show on NRA TV's owned platform. Right. So he needed a co-host. I went in. No idea what I was talking about, but apparently they liked that and they liked our banter back and forth. He was, you know, like a brother. And so by the end of that, I, I walked away uh, securing a gig on hosting a show for the NRA. Little did I know that getting that experience, jumping into the deep end of learning firearms, I kind of missed those days because you were talking about all the fun experiences you had with your SEAL buddies. I was around the military community a lot. I got a lot of great training. All my ammo was free. Yeah. You know, I did not realize how spoiled I was working with the NRA. Like now I'm like, I gotta buy my own ammo. This is an expensive hobby. Yeah, it is. <laughs> yep. Buy my own guns now? Like, man, this is really expensive. But the experience I got on that show was invaluable because I learned, first and foremost, like confidence around firearms. I knew that I could look at and pick up any platform. I could be proficient with them. I didn't have to feel scared anymore when my husband went out of town. He used to always have to lo rack the slide, load the firearm for me, remind me which way the magazine went in. Also remind me like if the safety is off or on, you know, I'm like, off or on, didn't have the red dot on there. And because we lived in a place where if I did call the cops, we were kind of an un on annexed land. So they weren't going to be getting there anytime quick. They're going to be know? a cleanup crew. Yeah. And so after that experience, I felt fully confident um, to be around self-defense tools. I felt very confident that I could pick anything up and I could use it proficiently. So that was great. That was a very empowering moment for me. And I really loved what I was learning. And I really wanted, as I started to get into the social media thing, I was like, you know what? I really think the message that I want to share with women is that this can be an option in your life to feel empowered and to feel confident. However, I wasn't exercising that right to carry a firearm on an everyday basis. It really didn't cross my mind that I needed to have a firearm because like so many women and people in general, nothing bad had ever happened to me. Right. So I have this I, I know that bad things can happen to people, but it's like somewhere out there. It's never actually it's not going to happen to me. I felt like I lived in a very safe community, yep. which we all know, like safety is just an illusion. So uh, fast forward to 2015. I'm a big runner. And so mm -hmm. I was training for another marathon, the Dallas Marathon, uh, the White Rock Marathon at that point. And I went. So we were in the country. So we lived out on all these deserted back roads. Right. Which to me should be a very safe place to go run because it's where I go clear my head. That's where I think, it's where I pray, it's where I talk to God. And so I went out just like I did every single day, didn't carry a self-defense tool with me. And that day was a little bit different. So that day I heard in the distance as I rounded this corner, I heard a car, which when there's no cars, like a car is gonna perk your interest, right? You're like, hey, right, what is this? Why, why is someone driving? There's really no need for people to just be driving on these back roads. I look back, there's this big white van and didn't really think anything of it until I got close to me and they started to slow down and that's when they rolled down their windows there was I don't know about seven of them in this car they got really close and they just started doing this aggressive cat calling and harassing it was really annoying but it wasn't threatening beyond that point it wasn't until they drove off went to the end of the road and came back that I had my like oh no moment it was that moment that all these thoughts start going through your head okay what if what if this escalates beyond this what if this turns into not just aggressive cat calling and harassing but if I piss them off by not responding the, the appropriate way and they do something to me. So all these things start going through my head as a woman, you know, they're bigger, stronger, faster than me. And I have no way to defend myself. The best that's going to happen is someone's going to find my body, you know? So I did the only thing I knew what to do. And I just started praying. I said, God, please give me home safe. Like give me all this situation. Help me to just 
be wise and know how to handle this right now. And then also, if you get me home, I will do something with this second chance. And so that's where my story ended. Like there's, there's plenty of women who do not get that second chance. There's more and more stories that we hear on the nightly news about female joggers going out and they don't get to make it home safe. But I did. And so when I got home, I said, that's it. I called my buddy who did self, uh, concealed carry classes. I got my concealed carry license, got my first gun. Like so pumped. I think it was like a Ruger LCP. Don't hold that against me. Just is what it is. It's an awful gun to shoot at the range, but great gun to go running with. And I said, all right, now where do I put it? Yeah. Like, what do you do? All right. So the only thing I know is like, oh, I'm going to go look at like, you know, these 511. I'm going to go look at like tactical, tactical clothing brands on, on the market. And I had a background in like the fashion industry. I was like, that is not going to cut. And no offense, but like, that's just not going to cut it for my everyday life. And if I, if I have to dress around my gun, like that's not going to happen. I need the firearm to fit seamlessly into my life. So then I was like, Lulu tactical pants. <laughs> like Lulu does <laughs> not make a tactical pant. Apparently they're not ever going to put a holster in their pant and probably Nike won't either. So, you know, I just kind of like came to terms with that. And then I said, well, if it's not an either, if I don't find anything that I really need, that's fashionable and functional, I'm just going to create it myself. So I posed this crazy idea to my husband who was working like his corporate job at that point. And I said, this is, this is where I think the market is going. I, there's a lot of women that are starting to be proactive about their self-defense and I want to do something about it. And that's how we came up with the idea in 2015. Brilliant. Thank you. So what's the name of the company <laughs> and shameless plug? Well, yeah. So the company is called Alexo Athletica and Alexo actually means uh, to defend and help in Greek. Nice. And so I thought that was like, this is perfect. Like it's two A's, you know, we're two A's supporting company. We're, uh, you know, unashamed to say that we're going to stand up and fight for a woman's right to be able to defend and protect herself. Truly, however, she feels like that's appropriate because I know not every single woman wants to carry a firearm. Mm -hmm. Not every woman is comfortable with a firearm, but whatever tool you choose, we are big proponents of getting trained. First and foremost, like knowing your tool, but also in your mindset. Mm -hmm. Like there's there's about 10 things that you might be able to do to get out of that situation prior to ever needing to pull a self-defense tool. But you need to have one there just in case that person is crazy. Just in, we're not dealing with normal people. Those that want to attack innocent women and children, they're not normal. They're not thinking normally like we do. So you really cannot approach that situation like a normal person would. Yep. You know, you need to be prepared for whatever situation that like your tool warrants. And so we're big proponents about women getting training and then carrying tools that they feel confident and, and comfortable with to feel capable to take care of themselves. So I've, I mean, as a dude, I've even struggled with when I run, how do I carry? Yeah. Um, because I tend to, like, I have different guns for different weather. That Same. might sound it's like our, silly, No, because but... it's like shoes. You have sh different shoes for different occasions. I tell people I have different, I have like my movie yeah. theater gun. Yep. I have my running gun. I have my home self-defense gun. I have like a different firearm for. A hundred percent. Well, and, situations. and there's also the practicality side of things. So for example, as we were talking about, if I'm out running on trails yep. and there's a, a bear or a coyote, um, I'm going to need a bigger right. gun right. with more stopping power. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a little derringer ain't gonna help you. <laughs> My Ruger LCP not gonna cut it in that yeah. situation. <laughs> but when I'm when I'm running in Florida, yeah. uh, you know, worst case, I'll hopefully never need it. But if I have to, it's to stop a bad dude, not not a bear. And your clothes are tinier in Florida. I mean, so you know, that's true. <laughs> you gotta have different options that's, for different for different that situations. A, that's a tough vision. <laughs> <laughs> And your little tiny booty shorts, Kyle. I don't know oh, how you're carrying in, in that we currently. We went there. So. But when I'm, <laughs> so, no, I got you. When I'm running in the fall in Connecticut, I'm wearing you know right. sweatpants no, no. Yeah. and a, a hoodie. Yeah. When I'm running in, in Florida, I'm wearing shorts and a, a yep. tank top. Um, but my my buddy Josh convinced me to get the uh, the Manny Pack, uh -huh. and so I have a tactical. Mm -hmm. Yep. Man and those are, those are super popular right now. I think for me, when I'm doing long distance running, I mean, remember, I, I came at this from keeping women walkers and runners safe. So I wanted things to be very close to the body, very secure, not something that's going to be bouncing yeah. up and down on me all the, all the time. I am not opposed to the to the pack. Like we're actually like developing them because they're very popular right now. Something that you can get to very quickly. But you're right. It's tough because mm -hmm. when you're running and you're running yeah, hard, it's tough. you got that thing smacking yep. the yep. cash and prizes. Right. Yeah. And like... <laughs> 
it, there's no easy, comfortable way. Yeah. I've tried the belly band thing. Yeah. Um, but first of all, if you have a belly, it doesn't work because then it's more like a belly roll and uh, yeah. like that sucks. And then if you get, if you can wear it, then when you're out for a run in Florida, yeah. you're sweating and then the thing's gross. And so well, that's been like the interesting part of having a small business and being so in tune with our clients because we can actually get the immediate feedback. What are you looking for? What type of products do you want? It was something that gave us a competitive edge at the very beginning. We were able to quickly produce like new colors for people, new styles. And can you make a skirt? Sure can. Here we go. Eight yeah. weeks later, like we, we were able to do that. We're able to roll things out like pretty quickly. And that was kind of our model at the very beginning. So when men started coming to us and we started getting multiple emails, and what are the guys? You guys are discriminating against like us men. And I'm like, not intentionally. We just have no money to market. You know, we're, yeah. we're a small business. We funded this all ourselves. And so we were trying to grow organically. So to put a large chunk in on developing a men's product that right. we don't even have a men, men's audience. I mean, we had, I think, 60,000 followers at that point on Instagram, which it was good because we got in way before they started this whole notion of shadow banning yeah. and before they started, you know, at one point when you have 60,000 followers, you used to could make a post and all 60,000 would see it or a large majority of them would see it. If people followed you, they followed you for a reason. Now Instagram has decided that they want to show you the content that they deem is relative to you. And it's really hurt small businesses like myself and especially other businesses in the 2A community because they think that we're, so they wouldn't even let us upload our products to the Instagram store or the Facebook store. They always kick it back and they're like, nope, selling weapons. I'm like, you can go to my website and see, I don't sell a weapon. I don't even sell mace on mice. I'm simply trying to keep women safe. So whatever their moderation policy is going on over there, it is really crippled and hurt a lot of us. I mean, gun manufacturers face the same thing every day. Like they can't even run ads. It's really interesting because we did a, a really cool collaboration with Springfield Armory. They wanted to start doing like premium apparel and they wanted to really focus on the concealed carry active market because they... You know, everyone's making these like single or stack and a half, like stack magazines now, like yeah. doing these subcompact models that you can be really active with and fit into your active lifestyle. So they wanted to do a collaboration with us. Well, they couldn't run ads for the clothing line on their, they can't even get approved to run Facebook ads. So we had to run the ads for them through ours, but we couldn't have like any firearms in them. So basically I had to like tell people like, go to the website to see how this works, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. One of the, one of the ways that we got around a lot of that with, with some of our clients at the marketing agency in the 2A space was water guns. Oh yeah, and bananas. Yeah. <laughs> we tried the bananas. I still got banned on TikTok like three times. My account's gotten taken down on. Well, let me tell you, it is <laughs> difficult running with a banana in your pants all the time. It, it, it is, but I can't imagine, you know, the water gun stopping the bear either. So, you know, maybe I could at least feed them. Pause. <laughs> So let's uh, let's talk a little bit about Parlor. Yeah, yeah. So you know, as we were going through this journey, and there's been a lot of changes in the landscape of how to market through social media. I mean, the world that we live in today, you cannot get away from the fact that big tech runs it. I mean, if you're going to do anything, you need to be. E-commerce stores are just traditionally they you know you can see better returns on that if you if you market it correctly and if you like grow your audience correctly than going the traditional like brick and mortar route right yep. however if you're in an industry that google doesn't like and they squash your seo or you're on facebook and they just take down your ads and they won't show people your content it's really hard to grow and you know we're trying to compete against people with multi-million dollar marketing budgets and we just can't do that. So we relied heavily on influencer marketing, um, like grassroots influencers, when that was like a big thing. Um, we just got in at, like, at the right time, but we started to slowly but surely see that our reach, our message was not getting out there. And that was like not okay with me because at the end of the day, the message of, of self-reliance and women being able to empower themselves this way is more important than selling clothing. The clothing is just a supplemental piece to all of that for me. So it, it was more important for us to start forming these alliances with partnerships where it could be really synergistic. And they're, you know, Parlor 1.0, what people remember uh, back in 2020, was kind of that first big player that said, we're going to be a free speech platform. Well, that lasted, you know, not very long until big tech shut them down. And then it's like, okay, well, they, they kind of ushered in the, I would say like the space for someone to enter into, into that. So that's when kind of Elon came in and said, well, Twitter is going to be like the free speech place. And we're not going to, we're not going to censor anybody on that. Well, when I got called, this is about, you know, a month ago at this point, 
my buddies are, are the company that was behind purchasing Parlor. So it's under completely new ownership. It's it's in a new it's going in a new direction. And I said, well, I need to hear what your mission is, um, because we are looking for like currently for partnerships that we can work together that is going to amplify everybody's message. But we've got to be aligned. And one of the things that I'm passionate about is keeping women and children safe. It's freedom, autonomy, loving this country, uh, being able to people with opposing views, being able to speak up on those platforms, get your content out there without being demonetized on YouTube, without uh, being shadow banned, even though they swear they're not shadow banning people. Like we all know oh, what's happening. We all, they all, we all know what's happening. And so when they told me what they were doing with Parlor, I said that is very much in alignment with what I want to be associated with. So they said, well, would you have any desire to come on board as our national spokesperson? And I said, absolutely. Like if we stick true to these principles of freedom, autonomy, um, I really love what they were doing with keeping women and children safe. So as we all look at the social media landscape, you've got young kids. It's very hard for us to keep them completely off of social media, right? So we would love for the private companies to step up and to actually do something about it on their own policies, right? So what Parler is doing in regards to that is we've got a lot of stuff going on with the roadmap that's going to actually help combat and fight human trafficking, which I'm really excited about. And the one way that they're doing that is actually making it a completely porn-free site. And I'm thankful for that because as a mom, that is a gateway to human trafficking. And if they have the ability to scan that, work with law enforcement to immediately get those images either removed, taken down, or help them find trafficked victims, then I'm all about that. So I thought that was really cool. Um, you know, it's not something that Facebook, Instagram, and, and X are, are touting. In fact, X just released their, we accept all porn <laughs> policy on, on their website. Oh, wow. I didn't see that. Yeah. yeah. So now they do say that it's, of course, like for 18 years and older <laughs> only. I'm like, you don't yeah, think so? Okay. 12 year old boy don't know how to put a fake birthday in there <laughs> yeah. like come on um, 47 yeah and so that's it's it goes so much more beyond now the just physically keeping our children safe i mean now we're work, we're worried about like, keeping them emotionally safe keeping them spiritually safe like there's so many more facets that we have to think about as parents so to be able to partner with a company that is truly dedicated to that was very excited, exciting for me. We uh, So I've been on the board of advisors for a counter human trafficking organization mm -hmm. since 2017 called Deliver Fund. And that is at the, the core of everything that these guys do as a nonprofit is how do we how do we keep people safe? Yep. Um, and you're absolutely right. I mean, first of all, porn is the, the gateway drug yep. to human trafficking. Um, and social media is where a lot of these when you when I use the word groomer, I'm not just talking about the the typical what's happening in the schools and yeah. everything. I'm talking about grooming people into human trafficking, mm -hmm. um, and it is really that gateway. And so yeah. I'm very grateful. Yep. Um, you know, we own the largest police news outlet in the world, and so that is something that's super close to us. Forget me yep. being a, a dad of four girls and a Christian yep. and a conservative like that. To to me is everything. Yeah. Well, they the FBI reports that there's around 500,000 predators online daily, like seeking their next victim. And now what we're finding out is it doesn't even have to do anything with like physical pictures. Now they have this AI deep fake stuff that there are no, there is no legislation against that. So even if you call law enforcement, a lot of times there's really nothing they can do about it because there's no legislation. So I know that there's a lot of effort currently. Um, there, there's an effort called Take It Down Act that's being led by Senator Ted Cruz, but it's completely bipartisan. So there's seven Democrats and seven Republicans, all from different states that are like, yeah, we need to do something about this. We need to put some type of legislation in place so that the victim has recourse so that they know who they can go to and get that taken down. Because without that, there's really, they're all protected. All social media platforms are protected by something called Section 230, which keeps the like a layer between their accountability of having to do anything to take it down. They can't be held accountable for anything that's posted on their platforms. Yep. Which is crazy. It's nuts. Yeah, it's nuts. It's nuts. So yeah, so I said, yes, let's do this. Let's jump on. I want to work with, obviously, my industry, the, the two-way space, has, have all been experiencing this censorship. I know so many content creators on YouTube that continue to use that platform because there is no other alternative at this point, even though they've been completely demonetized. So it's up to them to go out to find their sponsors, which is fine. But at the same time, like, wouldn't you like to be on a platform that will actually help monetize what you're doing, those efforts? And so one of the verticals that Parler is jumping into, yes, they'll have the social media public forum, which is like that typical... Um, you know, communication conversation way to go in and have like 
good, respectful discourse and debate and, and have opposing ideas on there. But what I'm really excited about is the Play TV. Yeah, it's So huge. Play TV is going to be awesome. Can't wait to get you guys content on there because you're not going to see us shadow ban like what you're putting out there and start to see all your numbers dip especially when it's really important stories when you're showing an opposing side opposing view to what the legacy media is showing it's like we got to know the true story and we need the truth to start getting out there totally. and i think that's what i'm excited about when when you really care about freedom and you really care about um autonomy like and you're seeking the truth like you've got to have those opposing views because how are you ever going to get the full story if you are only hearing one side yep. of the story so well we had a conversation with the content team over there and they said you, they wanted to hear all of our concerns yeah. they they wanted to take the approach of what have you dealt with in terms of shadow banning and what are the challenges and what are the opportunities and what do you guys need as creators who does that? Yeah. Like nobody does no. that. So to see the team of Parlor actively growing this beyond just a Parlor yeah. platform into something that is going to touch on. And yeah. I mean, I'm sure we can't even share a lot of the other stuff that's <laughs> under development yet. But you got to just join. You got to join along. And what I love, because you guys are so big on community and, and so am I, like we, we built the Alexo brand centered around community, centered around this community of empowered women who are very like-minded. We all are very come from very diverse backgrounds, but are very like-minded in what we believe empowerment means. And at the core of what Parlor is doing, and this is what I love, is they Parlor is people. They are about people. They're about fostering this community. They're about fostering and having a place where you can come with your differing ideas. And the one really neat thing that they're going to be implementing um, is their marketplace. And so we're going to become a parlor merchant. And so they are actually partnering with, um, they're going to have a, this entire rewards program that I'm extremely excited about that is going to actually reward and incentivize users on the platform to engage and interact in a positive way with one another. And as you do that and you gain your rewards, we will be a, a, a merchant for that that actually accepts your rewards. So your rewards actually turn into something of tangible value. I love so it. So we'll be accepting that. You can go buy you some gun pants with your Optio coins on, on the marketplace and we're gonna just continue to grow that out. And as you guys have merch and things that you wanna put on there that would potentially not get accepted in the Instagram store or on the Facebook marketplace, you're gonna be able to sell that in the parlor marketplace and have uninhibited growth with your audience that's actually gonna see the, the products. I mean, we've dealt with the, the censorship on both sides, right? Yeah. On the, the owning a media outlet, but also our marketing agency specializes in the conservative and the two-way space. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, we ran the marketing for years for enforced weapon mounted lights. Facebook and Instagram's terms explicitly state that you can advertise weapon mounted lights. <laughs> And yet they kept shutting down the ad okay. account and they said, well, you can't advertise weapon mounted lights. And we were like, but your terms say that we can. I know, I know. And so you have a combination of, of AI, right? Which just sees that there's a gun associated yep. with it and says no. And then you have idiots that work for these companies mm -hmm. that, that hate the second amendment yep. that are like, well, I'm just going to flag it anyway and yeah. let them fight it. And, and there's zero way to contact there for the common person. They don't have like a contact over at Instagram or Facebook to just call them and appeal the process. And so I, I do like that about Parler. They actually have an appeal process. If you think that something has been flagged and appropriate, we believe in due process. It's part of our constitutional right. So they're gonna say, look, there's an appeal process here and actually appeal it and you'll talk to a human who can say, yeah, okay, that, yeah, you were doing nothing harmful with that firearm. Because as much as we hate it, as much as we would love to be completely unfiltered, uncensored, we are still bound by certain policies with Google and Apple if you even want your app to be on their stores. Yep. So there are policies, and I don't think a lot of um, people in the conservative group actually understand that. They just want complete uninhibited like free speech and, and all this. And I'm like, well, but you still, if you actually want to utilize this platform, they still have guidelines that they have to abide by until we come up with like a parlor phone and our own, you know, parlor app. The cool thing that people need to understand that's going to separate parlor this time, parlor 3.0 from parlor 1.0, what they learned was that if you're autonomous, then you're not really free. So the reason why they got shut down in the first place was because they were on somebody else's cloud server mm -hmm. that decided that they didn't like their content and they were going to remove them from that cloud. So first and foremost, the a technology company is what purchased this and they saw the potential with the 20 million users that they had on the original platform that we said okay but we have to own the cloud mm -hmm. and by owning the cloud you are truly free and so that's where parlor cloud technologies comes in they actually own the cloud so that anyone that's worried about you know parlor getting taken offline again 
just put you at ease about that because you're not going to because they own the cloud technology. So. And I can attest to the fact that the company behind it, the people behind the company are just incredible human beings they are. Who, who have a heart for America yeah. and have a heart for the Constitution. And So shameless plug time one more time. Okay. Your company, Parler, all yeah, that good well, stuff. Yeah, actually, go find me on Parler. So I've really stepped back from a personal standpoint on utilizing any of the other big tech platforms because it's just not worth my time anymore. So go follow me on Parler at the Amy Robbins. Um, you can find me there. Now, our company, we are still on those other platform simply because that's where our audience has been. So if you really want to find out, I would say if you want to know what's going on with Alexa, go to our website, alexoathletica.com. Sign up for our newsletter there. That's where we send out great resources, information, and we do not flood your inbox. It's usually like, hey, we have 50% sale going on right now, which we do. We have 50% sale going on right now. <laughs> there we go. On our, on our Springfield collaboration, we extended our 4th of July sale. So go get you some gun pants. There you go. You get yeah. some of those uh, booty shorts that you wanted to carry your- Big time, bro. <laughs> Thank you for coming out. Thank you. I hope your your state is nice and safe as they deal with this uh, this hurricane. And parting thoughts. Um, great product. I think you know one of the things that you're saying points of safety, right? Being the law enforcement part of me is headphones first and foremost. Yep. When you're out there running with those suckers on, you got to get the the newer tech ones that pick up the the sounds around you. Mm. You know, because it's so it. Yeah, look, I yep. love doing shit with my music. Um, I love that, you know, you get on the plane and you put the, you know, yep. you but those are good on a plane. They're not good when you're running because you shut off the world. Bose actually, it's really interesting to see how the safety when running thing is actually going mainstream. Yeah. Adidas just did a whole campaign on it. Their recommendations were ridiculous. Run with your hair in a bun, uh, carry your keys in between your fingers, and then men just do better. That was their suggestion for how we're going to solve this problem. However, on the same side, it's like, well, if Adidas is recognizing that this is a problem, yep. it's a problem. And then I just saw, um, I think it was, might have been on running, was doing a collaboration with Bose. And they and it was clips. these special the kind clips. of ear earphones. Now, I am actually not a proponent at all for running with anything in my ears. I don't want anything to distract me. I will be that annoying person that just has my music playing. In my in my pocket. Yeah. So there's a pocket for that in, in your Alexa. You got eight pockets in your in your pants. Um, but it's interesting to see that mainstream is starting to pick up on this idea that women need to start being more aware first. Like be situationally aware first. That could potentially avoid many situations. Yeah, because I mean that's a start point. I mean, listen, ladies, be a badass. Seriously. If you're being challenged by somebody, be a badass. Buy these shorts, buy this wear. Don't be afraid to stick a gun in somebody's face because they're prepared to stick one in your face. Yeah. So you know what? Better to be a lion, right, than a yeah. sheep. Well, and and I think like being on a law enforcement show, obviously we're big supporters of the law enforcement. We actually have a, um, a discount code for all first responders, veterans, and active duty, which I can share with you guys. You know, I'll put up there. But it, it still does not take away the fact that ladies, you have to be your own first responder right. because the amount of time that it takes to make the phone call and get the law enforcement officer there, you, so that's plenty of time so for someone to do what they want to do. And so if we just start to take our safety into our own hands, how we see fit, and it, that's just the most important thing that you can do is just have a tool. I say have a tool to back up your no. That gives you the confidence to project confidence, to tell someone to back up, to tell them to walk away, because you know that you can do something if they continue to advance. That's why, that's why I think it's important to have a tool. You also have the adrenaline component too. If God forbid something happens, I mean, first of all, if it happens at the end of a run, you're shot. Yeah. You're already toast. Mm -hmm. And so as a female, you're going to be at a biological disadvantage when you have yeah. seven dudes roll up in a van. You're already shot because you're you're at mile 18 and now adrenaline is completely coursing through your body, mm -hmm. um, but not necessarily in the best of ways in those scenarios. And so I think the, the tool that you have here for the tool is brilliant and uh, I just commend you on it. Yeah, and, thank you. And uh, yeah, I think it's incredible. So guys, highly encourage you all to check it all out. Thank you all for watching. Part Mom, of I love you. And um, to my sister, she's battling breast cancer. You got this, sis, love you. Thanks for coming on the show. Thank you guys. God bless you all and God bless America. All right.